when I was on a travel team, uh, I was like way under rage of all the people. I was only there because I could field. Mm -hmm. uh, but they stuck me in right field for some reason because I couldn't hit because that logic follows somehow. Yeah. Cause... Um, and I remember I had a game against this team from Farmer's Branch. Um, my team got beat uh, in the end 31 to 6. Yeah. Um, but there was one inning where the other team How scored 17. How was there a baseball 17, game where there was 31 points scored? Seven, 17 runs were scored in one inning, and I was literally sitting oh. in the outfield lying down. Is I there took, not? <laughs> I took a nap. I actually lied down and closed my eyes for 10 minutes, and I woke up, and it's still nothing got to me. I thought that in Little League there was, like, a mercy rule. There is, but not for that league. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. There's the only... There's not a mercy rule in this league. No punches are going to be pulled between these two players, Austin and Karna, meeting in winner's semifinals. That's the transition I was going to make, but thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so, yeah, on Battlefield, this is a big comfort pick for Austin. Uh, and I feel like the stage isn't necessarily as great for Sheik as other stages are, particularly because she has to work so hard to get kills. No, but I feel like Austin banning Smashville is probably the right thing. Uh, the thing about Sheik is the large blast zones of this stage don't affect her that much. That was so smart. Yeah. Uh, they don't affect her that much because she is going to be primarily, especially in this matchup, getting her kills off of edge guards, uh, as well as also these platforms actually set up perfectly for her up smash uh, or other, like, just general setups, like tech chases on the platforms to get kills a little bit easier than just on straight flat ground. So Sheik does have some cool things on this stage. Well, we'll see how well Karna takes advantage of that. Right now, we really saw him take advantage of getting Austin off stage. That really predictable recovery coming in to bite Austin because Karna was just so oppressive with that bouncing fish. But now Austin has the chance to edge guard. Yeah. Karna refusing to drift off stage there with the with the PK fire put him in a really bad spot. Now recovering, and he loses that stock all because you didn't want to drift off stage and didn't want to give Austin the time to set up edge pressure. Yeah, and um, especially with a character like Sheik, who has just such a quick recovery, sometimes you just got to say, I'll oh, let him get set up. Look at this advantage state from Karna. He's pressing it as hard as he can every time he gets a hit. Oh, Ooh, very good PK fire. Yeah, it was creative, but Karna just fell right through the bottom. Again, there's no SDI <gasps> multiplier on that move. <laughs> oh my we'll take goodness. It. Karna is a madman flipping and flopping, flying like a fish. Oh, all over Austin, and it doesn't matter if he's actually getting the connect, actually getting that kill. He's just pushed Austin far enough away that he'll tank the hit. As long as he's able to survive, which he has been able to, he set him up in positions where he can. Uh, he's just going to nerf that distance that Austin gets, and he's not going to be able to make it all the way back. Yeah. And now we're making just a slight change of scenery to Dreamland, which I don't know if I actually particularly agree with this. I think that Sheik is better on Dreamland in general than she is on Battlefield. I don't. Uh, no. This could be a very 2015 Sheik mentality uh, coming out of me, uh, but it's actually a little bit harder, if I remember correctly, to set up like up smash on the platforms. Um, so your kill options are not quite as reliable. And uh, like I said before, it doesn't really matter about the ceiling because you don't get like early kills with Sheik or anything, it's mostly edge guards. So Austin wants to get these earlier kills. He wants to be able to take advantage of the large sides as well at this stage. Well, we'll see if he can avoid that ledge guard game that Karna put so relentlessly on him last time. Right now, Austin pushing him back to center stage, but not finding a conversion off the PK fire. I really like that roll in from Karna. Karna uses roll sparingly, despite the fact that Sheik has one of the best ones. And now... Wow, Austin just waiting and... Oh! Going to take the stock and even it out. Okay, so if Dakpo had inhabited the spirit of Karna right there, he would have just drifted into the Thunderhead mm -hmm. and taken that taken that stock for the sickest edge guard of his life. Um, unfortunately, that did not happen, but now both players reset to zero. You, we would describe both Dakpo and Karna as very cerebral players. Oh, yeah. But very differently. Uh, uh, now... Cerebral. That actually might have uh, stifled Karna's momentum a bit. Austin, for the first time in this set, is mounting a, a good lead. Of course, Sheik is a character that can bring that back with a couple neutral exchanges, and she does have all the tools to win multiple, but wow, Whoa. one big overextension there. And that's going to do it. He was only at around 100% at the ledge, but like I, those smaller blast zones from Dreamland really finesse, yep. coming in clutch. Way to make me eat my words. Was you were succinct, persuasive? It could it could just be my 2015 chic mentality, like I said. But I heavily prefer Battlefield over Dreamland. 
We'll see Karna go back to a base stage. Gonna go to town and city this time. Um, and I think this is alright, particularly on that second transformation. Karna gets a lot of uh, horizontal gameplay rather than vertical. Mm -hmm. um, and also for Austin to reach him on these upper platforms, he's generally gonna have to burn his double jump, which is not something that you really want to expend as Ness because it's so important to your gameplay, not to mention your recovery. Karna's doing such a good job of baiting options from Austin with his movement. Wall in advantage, he'll like run past Austin and fast fall and uh, bait out an offensive move. Oh, he he is did so it good. again. He, he just has a very different way of dealing with, with Ness recoveries than Dako does. Oh yeah. He's like, I'm just gonna take the hit. It's all right. It's oh no. But he'll also just take the hit sometimes, which is. Yeah, he'll just take the hit, man. Austin is ready. You know, I feel like this is a record for number of PK Thunder 2s Austin has hit in a game. Uh, it <laughs> might not, set, yeah. yeah, in a set, yeah, it might not be his favorite record. Because <laughs> if you if you take the record into account of how many times it's worked and how many times it hasn't, oh, oh no! I didn't think he would make that back, but then I saw that he bounced off the tiny lip, and I was like, is there a chance? Because because you'd think that maybe he'd be able to flick it around fast enough, but no. That's only on those flat-walled stages. Yeah. That's really unfortunate way to go out. Karno was, like, super dominating the edge guard game, but... Wow.